Okay, you guys, so songwriter Tiffany Red is blasting the big names in the industry for stealing publishing. Now she ranted on talking about multiple artists like Beyonce, Tamar, Seven Streeter, basically saying that they have been stealing a certain percentage of publishing when they had no hand in writing the song. She says she's fed up and that songwriters have been dealing with this for the longest. Now she zones in big time on Beyonce, saying that she has heard from songwriters herself that Beyonce has stolen like 25% of publishing when she never even wrote the song. Now I know y'all remember Jay-Z ranting on at the Grammys about Beyonce never winning album of the year. But she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys never won album of the year. That doesn't work. But there's a blind item explaining why Beyonce will never win and backing what Tiffany is saying. So it says it doesn't matter what this permanent A-list rapper says to try to get his wife the album of the year, she won't win that one. And the A-plus list singer won't ever win the songwriting award because they both have made too many songwriters mad over the years. Which I'm really believing that based on what Tiffany is saying. Now, I'm gonna play her live and I want you guys to listen to what she has to say and let me know what you think in the comments but that's all i have for you and i'll talk to you later i just want to clear some things up real quick so my name is tiffany red i am a songwriter a grammy winning songwriter i have been writing songs for 17 years i've been in the music industry my entire adult life i'm the founder of the 100 percenters i run a nonprofit, and all i do is advocate for the compensation of songwriters. Why? Because I was a songwriter and I walked away from the music business because of the things that I speak about. So I have extensive experience. Almost all of my friends are in the music industry and write for your favorite artist, like a Beyonce. Um, so I'm not up on the internet just talking shit and like, you know, making things up. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I ain't trying to get sued. That's called defamation. I'm not defaming anybody. I am um, coming to y'all with things that I can back up. I don't never get on this platform and talk about shit I don't know. I be having, you see this? You see this thing? I am organized, honey, okay? Y'all might not think that because you watch me on the internet and you don't know me like that for real. You only know the front-facing Tiffany Red, but like, I got a brain. Okay. Secondly, almost every artist that I have ever written for has gotten publishing on the record. Almost every record that I have done, I have written when the artist was not in the room. I'll go through my own songs. Replay. Zendaya got 10% of the publishing, I think. She did not write on the song. She didn't. That song was written at a Rihanna song camp. It was on hold for Rihanna. Then it was on hold for Rita Ora. Famous came to me and said, yo, Tiff, there's this artist named Zendaya. We should cut replay on her. So Zendaya got published in a writer credit. She did not write on replay. Um, King by Tamar Braxton. I wrote and produced that song. I wrote that song for myself as an artist. In my living room. In my living room. <laughs> Tamar got, I don't know. I don't know what she ended up getting. I think I own like 85% of that song. But I should own all of it because I did all of it. She didn't write shit. Seven Streeter, who's a songwriter? This one really hurt my heart. Seven Streeter, just being honest. Me and Monsoor did that song. It was originally called Bitch. I wrote that song by myself. I'm not even really a big co-writer like that. I prefer writing songs by myself because I don't know, I just prefer to write like that. So I have a lot of records that I have placed that either have one co-writer on or that I've written solo dolo, right? Seven ended up with 10% of that record. I fought like hell for her to not have any of the publishing because she didn't write anything on it. Publishing is my only source of income. I didn't even, and by the way, <laughs> 
none of the artists that I that I've mentioned have a career anything close to in music Beyonce none of them do but the reason why I'm bringing up my experience with every artist or almost every artist that I've worked with that has taken publishing that they did not earn on the songs that I wrote for them is because there is a precedent that's set. The reason why I called out Beyonce is because Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation. And so if there's anybody that could reshape the precedent, if there's anybody that could influence the industry that had the power and the money and the cultural like thing to say you know what y'all you're right these songwriters have been out here we've been in the street literally i have been in the street in front of spotify i've been in front of universal i have sat and i have talked to all y'all publishers i talked to y'all publishers i talked to the dsps I talked to the copyright royalty, uh, the copyright, the U.S. Copyright Office. I talked to NMPA. I talked to RIAA. I talked to Sona. I talked to NSAI. I talked to all of them. And guess what? Y'all are still broke. Okay? That's the fucking truth, right? Okay? So the people that are like, oh, this is not true. I had somebody call it propaganda yesterday. It's not fucking propaganda. The reality is, is there is no A-list artist, B-list artist, or C-list artist that's not taken publishing because that is the way the music industry works. And to deny that is delusional. And what I will not allow <laughs> is for anybody to make me feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone because I know I'm not in the Twilight Zone. I can pull up my records. I talked to somebody yesterday, somebody's uh, a manager of somebody who is a writer and producer on Renaissance, okay? The record is one of y'all faves. The song was written six years before it got to Beyonce. She got 25% of the song. I've talked to another, another writer who wrote and sang on one of your favorite songs. Credit not right, all kind of shit fucked up. His business still isn't handled. Beyonce was on tour last year with that record, with that person's vocals, all that. I'm not crazy. And here's the thing. The reason why people who work for Beyonce don't talk is because they're all on NDAs because that's also how she works. She silences people so that nobody can speak. I'm not a writer that's written for Beyonce. I haven't shot, I haven't sh shot my shot at Beyonce because I'm don't. i not willing to give her any publishing. Not because I haven't had the opportunity. I've had the opportunity to work with everybody and I've turned down a lot of stuff because I'm not willing to play these games. There's a massive power dynamic happening. Please don't act like it's easy to negotiate with Beyonce and her team because it is not. If it was, th if that was the case, there would not be so many people coming to me like, Tiff, this is how much was taken. Shit is not negotiable. It's not. These are the terms, which means, okay, cool. Then we work for you, Beyonce. So that means you're an employer. But either way, to imply that the artists do not have to be responsible for the business practices that they exercise with songwriters to, to, to insinuate that the only way you are treated fairly is if you are managed by one of the gatekeepers is bullshit. It's bullshit. You shouldn't have to be in company with a gatekeeper to be treated fairly. You should not have to have a gatekeeper on your team to make a livable wage off of music that is making people billionaires. Them Grammys don't pay the bills. Those plaques do not pay the bills. There are people with Grammys and plaques who can't pay their rent. I know people who are super accredited, broke. It means nothing. Trust me, I know. I remember 
having a conversation with a writer who wrote on what was the record Beyonce did after or before Renaissance? I can't remember whatever the record was. I remember talking to one of the writers and talking to them about how much of the publishing she was taking. And this writer was like, look, Tip, I, I don't want no smoke with me. Like, I just let her take the publishing. That's bullshit. All of these writers that you guys see celebrating in a studio with these artists posted up in pictures like, yeah, everything is all good. Those writers are being exploited. Those writers' time is not paid for. Their services are not paid for. Their contribution to the, to the sound recording is not paid for. Their, the, the, um, their first use of the copyright is not paid for. Their fucking parking is not paid for. Their fucking lunch is not paid for. That's the truth. The truth is, is that we work in an industry that proclaims and makes billions of dollars, but can't even buy you fucking lunch. But I'm, but I'm tripping. But I'm tripping. No, they're tripping. And you're tripping if you with them. There's people that are like, then nobody had no gun in your head. The gun to your head is the power dynamic. Think critically, y'all. The gun to your head is the power dynamic. The gun to your head is your livelihood. The gun to your head is being excluded and ostracized and, and retaliated against for tr even trying. That's the gun to your head. They don't need to put a gun to your head anymore. Because they control everything. That's the gun. You being silenced. That's the gun. And you know, the thing that the thing that burns me up the most about Beyonce, and this is why I'm speaking about her specifically, is because Beyonce is queen b beyonce is a black artist beyonce represents black excellent black black excellence beyonce's team like the people who work with her these writers that i'm talking about that are exploited are they're us you know what <laughs> it's so funny because when I think about my own career and all the people that have fucked me over, it's been my own people. Cause those are the opportunities I had to work with my people. And this business is a racist business. So if you're black, you're usually put in R&B and hip hop with artists that are black, creatives that are black, executives that are black. And you know what your people do to you? The same thing that white people do to you. And we pedestal them like goals. That is not fucking goals. Capitalism is not goals. That shit is not cute. Capitalism is rooted in chattel slavery. That's the foundation of capitalism. To be a billionaire, you have to exploit labor. That is not the shit. It's fucking disgusting is what it is. My comments about Beyonce not winning album of the year and me saying, you know what, maybe karmically it's not coming to you because of the way that you're doing creatives. I meant that with everything in me. I hear the racial discussion and all the things and I think that that has its place. But this has its place too. It does. And they all can exist. Beyonce could absolutely reform her business practices. Beyonce could absolutely reform Parkwood's business practices. It's a decision. It's a fucking choice. It's a choice to take 25% of publishing that you didn't earn. That's wage theft. That's what that is. That's bullying. That's abuse of power. That is the power dynamic. That's the gun. People out here think they're going to lose their opportunities, lose their jobs, lose their relationships, lose everything trying to negotiate. And y'all fucking know that shit. 
And to act like that's not the case is so, like, for me, like, that's the shit that gets me riled up. Like, people are always like, oh, my God, why are you not scared? Because I'm fucking mad. What you're not going to do is try to make me feel crazy because I know I'm not crazy. I'm a songwriter. I have lived this. My friends around me live this. Still, I hate it for them. There are artists that are A-list artists that can lead the charge here too. I'm not saying wait on Beyonce. I'm not. But I am going to say what I need to say about it because for the last almost four years now, I have had so many writers come to me about her specifically. And I also want y'all to know that like, I'm not the kind of person that comes to the internet first. I come to the internet last. I come to the internet at the end when I tried everything else I could try. So trust and believe on the back end, I've been doing a lot when it comes to this conversation and who I'm having conversations with and how and all the things. So I've been doing what I'm supposed to do and nothing has gotten done. People split still aren't done. People still aren't getting paid. People still aren't being seen. People still aren't being heard. People are still being silenced. People are still under NDAs and some more shit. While Jay-Z's up there on Sunday talking about why it's not fair Beyonce don't got a Grammy for album of the year. So hell yeah, I have something to say. Because it's hypocrisy. Also, not for nothing, Taylor Swift is a songwriter. She writes her albums. Yeah. <sighs> That's all I had to say about that. I'm gonna go back to my day. I wanted to have this quick vent so that y'all can hear me out. Um, and so that the people out there can hear me out who are, you know, who have the commentary going on right now because I'm definitely getting the messages. I'm definitely getting the, did you see that? I'm definitely seeing the like, you know, let me set the record straight. Put the splits on the table, set the record straight. Pull the email chain, set the record straight. I like facts. I showed y'all, I showed y'all my thing. I like facts. Show me the splits. I can show y'all my splits and I can show y'all the artists that are on my splits that got published and that they didn't earn. Yeah, I ain't think so. Y'all have a lovely day.